We will now um, talk about how to use uh, Visual Basic for Applications, VBA, um, to automate the calculation process. Now we have set up the model already for um, one particular laptop, and this case is the laptop number 5, which is the AC V5171. Now I changed this sheet a little bit by um, inserting a cell, or I reserve this particular cell, B22, to represent a particular uh, laptop on the evaluation. And this cell is the key um, in our VBA code. Okay, And you will see um, just in a moment. So for example, for this one, um, if you look at this yellow cell, B23, uh, B23 um, has a uh, index function. Uh, if you, this is the first time you use index function, I suggest you look up in the help section in the Microsoft Excel to, to find out how you can use the index function. So basically what it does is, uh, in the index function, um, in, in the array here, uh, as you can see, um, here, the weight of the category 1 is selected, okay? And then the second parameter is the, the row number, okay? Which is specify uh, which laptop is on the evaluation. In my case, it's 5, so it will pick out um, the, the fifth row, which is ACRV5171, okay? Um, and then, you know, the... The, here is the um, the column number, uh, which is eight, because you only have one column, so you can just use zero in here. Um, same thing. Um, this is another index function, okay? And you can use um, sort of select uh, the width the category two, okay? And the row number is the same as five. So. The 5, you know, this cell B22 uh, indicates where uh, you pick um, the value from the weight of the category 1 and the weight of the category 2. Okay, so if I change this number uh, to 1, and obviously if you do that, uh, you're going to look at the first laptop. So if I change that to 1, and you see um, the values in the first row, um, in this data block, okay, are being um, taken uh, from um, these two cells uh, into um, these two cells. Now remember, um, in each model, okay, in each model, uh, we these two cells will have to be changed for each laptop on the evaluation. Okay, so. As you can imagine, if I change this number 1 um, to 2 to 3 uh, all the way to 17, that will be our last uh, laptop. If we finish that process, we will get all the uh, ratios or the maximum ratios or the readings for all the, uh, the laptops. So this is the whole idea uh, that we are going to use the VBA code to accomplish this. Now, before you go into uh, the VBA uh, editor in Excel, uh, you want to make sure that you have already set up the model in the Excel solver, um, because we've already done that. So this is the model that we set up previously. And you also want to make sure that you have solved the model uh, correctly. Uh, the model has a solution. Okay, In that way, then you can use the VBA later on to call the solver model uh, or Again, again, you know, from the first laptop all, all the way to uh, the number 17 in our case. Now, the VBA um, is available under the tab Developer. So, if you click on the Developer, you can see, you know, Visual Basic. So, this is where you um, need to use for um, the VBA. Now, if you don't see the develop tab, uh, you should do this. Go to Files and you know, click Options. Okay, this will bring up this. And then you click Customize Ribbon. 
Uh, in that window, um, you will see uh, this um, tab. You just check that. Now you need to click this Visual Basic, and that brings up um, the Visual Basic for Applications uh, window. Um, since I've already built up the model, so there's a couple of things that you need to do. The first thing that you need to do is to insert a reference to the solver. You do this by click on Tools, and then you will see uh, References. And then you see this window. In there, you should check the solver box. You should check this box. Okay, so that will add a reference to that. You must do that. Otherwise, you will get an error message if you try to run the, um, the VBA code. Now, in, in here, you, you, you see that I already have the, the code um, set up in here. But before you do that, you will actually need, also need to insert a module. Okay, you do that by insert module. You do that. Okay, so you know this is a sort of a a, a blank module in in there. You can do that. Uh, but let me go back to so, so the two steps that you need uh, two steps that you need to perform. The first is to insert a reference um, to the solver, and the second step is to insert a module. Uh, the module will contain uh, the VBA code. Um, so, you know, this this is the um, the code. What the code does basically is that you know you're saying that um, the the units uh, it goes from one to seventeen, okay, and range B twenty two. Now remember, um, B twenty two is this cell, okay? This is the cell that we store a particular laptop on the evaluation. So you set this equal to um, a particular laptop on the evaluation. So that cell goes from 1 to 17. And then you would type this in there. Um, this basically calls the solver and, and, and solve it. The next thing is that where do you want to uh, record the results? Now remember, um, this would, would be our maximized ratio for a particular um, DM, uh, uh, laptop on the evaluation, the cell B24. Um, however, if you don't place uh, this maximum ratio into a place, in my case, I, I'm going to put it in, in this column L, then when you solve the next laptop, um, this um, value will be overwritten. So that's why. Um, in my case, I say I'm going to place my uh, maximum ratio for each laptop into um, column J. Okay, so there's only you know, one, two, three, four, five, you know, five lines of code um, that will do uh, the job. Once you have that code, and then you will just go to the Excel and uh, click micro and you select this micro that you just uh, entered and you click run. As you can see, all the ratios are reported in this column L. So in our case, um, this is our solution. So all the laptops with a uh, maximum ratio of 1 uh, in this particular column are the top laptops or we call the you know best practices uh, in, in in this in this, this particular case. Now one thing I should point out that in the previous setting, um, if you recall, uh, in this cell here, I actually entered a formula saying that you know the L2 um, is equal to um, J2 um, divided by I2, which is the ratio of weighted category two divided by weighted category one. Now uh, in this particular case, I actually um, report the the maximum ratio in the same column. Now, if you want sort of to keep the uh, the original ratio that you calculated based upon uh, the with the category two divided by with the category one, um, you can actually keep this column. Okay, and then you can actually uh, say, for example, record the the maximum ratio on 
in, in column M. So this is something that you can, if you want to keep the sort of the, the original ratios. Now remember, the original ratios, um, they are not necessarily the, the best ones in, in the sense that that's the maximum ones. And also, um, the other thing I should point out that um, in this particular case, for example, uh, right now, uh, you know, it goes from, the laptop goes from 1 to 17. Right now, uh, we have the, uh, the maximum ratio for laptops uh, 17, which is the last laptop. Um, it's about uh, 63 63%. Uh, that means this laptop is not a best practice. Um, now you have to remember in this particular model we actually let each laptop to pick their way so that their ratio can be maximized. So in this case the laptop 17 um, in a sense that this particular laptop um, is not able to pick any set of ways such that you can have a, a ratio of 1. Uh, because we let each laptop to pick their weight, so the weight that you see um, in here, um, in uh, this row, uh, 20, uh, row, the 20th row, um, they may change from laptop to laptop. So this is, is, this is the information, the weights for the laptops uh, 17. So if I change this number to 1, and let's say I'm just going to resolve it. And you can see, um, you know, the weight changes. And this weight will give uh, a ratio of 80%. 80%. That means the best ratio um, the first laptop, HP, can achieve is about 88%. You may also notice that uh, for this particular laptop, you see all the weights are not um, not zero. Now, um, previously, if I go back to um, the last step, 17, and I have to resolve it again, um, and you can see um, this laptop actually picks a zero weight um, on the this particular measure weight. Now, does this mean that um, this laptop actually um, does not consider the weight? Not necessary. Uh, the reason is because the following. Um, this is what we call a, a linear programming uh, technique. So there are um, the infinite number of ways that um, a laptop can pick. Uh, it happens that the, this particular solver um, program gives out a, a zero weight. This does not necessarily mean that you may be able to find out a uh, another set of weight that will give you the same uh, maximum ratio, but all the weights are positive. Okay, it is possible. We will um, address this issue uh, later on in uh, um, chapter two. Um, so here I sort of just give you an idea that um, you can look at the weights, but sometimes if you z you see zero, this does not necessarily mean that uh, a you actually use a zero weight because uh, if you if you think about it, if you use a zero weight, that means you basically take one particular measure out, and this is not a um, you know ideal situation because you've selected these five measures and you want to evaluate uh, these laptops based upon the five measures. If you apply a zero weight, then in this case um, you only have price and, and battery life, the RAM and the HDD capacity. Um, but I again, I would like to point it out, this is just the result from a uh, computer model. It happens that th the computer uh, finds out this particular um, set of weight in which um, the weight or the multiplier on the weight measure uh, is zero. But there are possibilities that there is another set of weight, you know, this uh, weight is not equal to zero. But we just um, not at, we are not able to uh, get that solution from um, this particular solver program.